Okay, up till now in section 4.5, we were looking at um, exponential models. And we were using logarithms primarily to solve exponential equations when you wanted to solve for the exponent. Well, in these application problems, we're going to actually look at logarithmic models. And they, they have a nice feature, uh, especially when you're dealing with numbers that are very, very big or very, very small written in scientific notation. For example, take, take this number right here. 2.3 times 10 to the 7th. When you take the logarithm base 10 of that number uh, and use your logarithm properties, you could write it like this, right? Product turns into a sum, remember? And the log base 10 of 10 to the 7th is just 7, isn't it? So, so, um, and furthermore, log base 10 of 2.3, if you look at the graph of log base 10 of x, when, when, when you give the log base 10 function a number close to 1, you get a positive value, but it's, it's not going to be a very big value, is it? So that this, that this it, it does contribute a little bit, but not very much. The, the, the logarithm of this number is primarily the exponent, isn't it? That, that's what determines it mainly. Um, so another example, if you, for, if you wanted to look at the log base 10 of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 13, it's going to be approximately the exponent of 10, isn't it? So you, it's approximately negative 13. So if numbers vary really greatly, when you take the logarithm of it, you get a nice number that doesn't doesn't vary that much. In this first example, let's look at the pH scale. Uh, let's see, the um, that, that's a measure of how acidic a substance is. The, the, the greater the hydrogen ion concentration, the, the closer the pH is to zero. And the smaller the hydrogen ion concentration is, the, uh, the less acidic, the more basic it is. It t generally varies the pH scale, generally from 0 to 14, although it's possible to have a negative pH. Um, and 7 is considered neut neutral. Alright, so let's look at an example. Let's suppose you have a soil sample from the Pacific North Northwest, which tend to have slightly acidic soils. The question is, if you know the pH, what would the hydrogen ion concentration be? So you just set the pH equal to 5.4. Before you raise 10 to each side, you better multiply by negative 1. And then um, you can raise 10 to each side. On the right side, the, the 10 and the log base 10 cancel. You just get the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 5.4. If you enter that on your calculator, you get 3.98 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. So I ask you, isn't it easier just to work with a number like 5.4 than this very, very um, awkward number here? So that, that's why we use it. How about going backwards? What, what if you know... Uh, vinegar, for example, which is rather acidic, uh, has, a P has a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.9 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter. What would the pH be? Let, well, let's just kind of guess at it first. From what we said earlier, wouldn't the pH be basically negative of the exponent, right? That's where that negative sign, that's why we put that negative sign there, by the way. It's just so the thing comes out positive. So it's negative of the, it'd be about 3, I'm guessing. And, but when you actually do that, you, um, you plug in the 3.9 times 10 to the negative third, you take the logarithm and multiply by negative 1, you get 2.4. Okay, in this next example, let's look at the Richter scale, which is a nice measurement for the intensity of earthquakes. Uh, let's see. Um, the intensity, I, is, is measured in terms of how many centimeters the seis seismograph moves. Uh, and we have this thing called S. S is what's called the smallest earthquake, or, the, or the, I should say the threshold by which you can notice the earth earthquake. Any earthquake that's, small, that's smaller than this, you wouldn't notice. Any, any earthquake greater than this, you would. So think, think of this as, as the threshold by which you, you could start to feel them. What's nice about this, this Richter scale is, for example, what would the Richter scale reading be for, for this earthquake here? What would the... Richter scale give you for S. Well, if you plug in S in for I, you get that the Richter scale reading is logarithm of S over S, which is log of one, which is zero. So isn't isn't that clever how we how we we design the scale um, uh, so that the Richter scale reading for the threshold of whether you could notice or not has Richter scale reading zero. That's that's what this does. Let's do a few more. What if you're given the Richter scale reading? and you want to find the intensity. All right, well, if you're given the Richter scale reading of 5.4, we just want to solve this for i. 
you would raise 10 to each side. And on the right side, you just get I over S, right? And on the left side, you get 10 to the 5.4. If you enter that on your calculator, well, but first of all, let, let's multiply both sides by S. Remember what S is? S is a constant. That's 10 to the negative 4. So when you multiply both, both sides by S, you get um, 10 to the 1.4. And if you enter that on your calculator, you get 2.5 times 10 to the 1 centimeters, or just 25 centimeters. Here's an interesting question. I'm sure you've seen this before. If the Richter scale increases by 1, how much does the intensity increase by? So let, let's, let's suppose you have two Richter scale readings where M2 is the bigger one, but the difference between M2 and M1 is 1. So this Richter scale reading minus the first one is 1. The question is, how much would the intensities increase by? Well, what's the definition? The Richter scale reading for this one would be the intensity of that, would be log of the intensity of this one divided by s, and the Richter scale reading for this would be the log of the intensity of this divided by s equals 1. Using your logarithm rules, can't you combine these? Can't you write this as a quotient? And notice how the s's cancel. When you take this divided by this, the s's cancel. So you end up with that you have the um, logarithm base 10 of i2 over i1 equals 1. Now you can raise 10 to each side. And, and you get that I2 over I1 equals 10 to the 1, or 10. What does that say? That says that I2 equals 10 times I1, which says that whenever the Richter scale reading increases by 1, the intensity goes up by a factor of 10. So it's 10 times stronger. Okay, this last one, the uh, decibel reading, uh, is very similar to the um, Richter scale reading. You got this extra, extra 10 here. That, that's that's going to uh, mag magnify these, these values a little bit, isn't it? But the same idea, you, you, you're, you're, you've got the intensity of the, of the sound, that's measured in watts per square meter, and you have this I0, it's the same thing as S. This, this would be called the, um, this is the threshold by which you, you could hear, that the human being at least could, could, could hear sound. Anyway, so the first question I'm asking is again, what would be the decibel reading if, if the intensity of the sound is the uh, barely notice, noticeable thre threshold. What do you think it should be? Well, the decibel reading is 10 times the log of, of I over I naught. If I equals I naught, you have 10 times the logarithm of 1. Logarithm of 1 is 0, so you get 0, which again, it, make, it makes sense that that should be 0 because if this is, the, this is the threshold by which you could barely notice it, it's nice to have a scale where it, it reads 0 there. And again, that's why we divide. Let's do a few more. If you're given the um, decibel rating of 110, what would the intensity be? Well, let's see. You just plug it in. You would set the decibel rating equal to uh, 110. Now, before you raise 10 to each side, let's divide by 10. So we get 11 equals log of I over I naught. When you raise 10 to each side, you get this. And on the right side, you just get I over I naught, right? Well, remember, I naught is 10 to the negative 12. So when you, when you multiply both sides by I naught, you get this. If you add the exponents, you get 10 to the negative 1. So there you go. It would be, be 1 tenth watts per meter squared. Okay, last one here. How much more intense is the sound of a decibel reading of 120 than a decibel reading of 100? That's an interesting question. We're going to approach this the, the same way we did for the Richter scale difference. So if the decibel reading for the second sound uh, minus the first sound would be 20 then, right? If, if, the, if this de decibel reading is 120 and this decibel reading is 100, the difference would be 20. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the definition of de decibels here uh, for each of them. Uh, before, we raise, before we combine them, let's divide both sides by 10. That's a nice little thing. Now let's combine them. Now remember, when you, when you combine them, uh, the I naughts cancel, so this is where we're at. We're, we, have that, um, we have that the um, log base 10 of I2 over I1 equals 2. Now let's raise 10 to each side, and so you get I2 over I1 equals 10 to the 2, which is 100. So that, that says that I2 is 100 times I1. That says that, that, that when the decibel reading went up by 20, the intensity of the sound increased by a hundred times. Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.